I'm going to introduce kind of the status of the use of genetics and biomarkers in prostate and, and bladder cancers, um, you know, and, and recognizing what the first two talks were covering. Um, I'm really uh, going to shift a bit more to the advanced disease space. So, you know, as a matter of background, uh, some might treat this as a controversial statement. I don't think it is anymore. That genetic testing is now a part of the best practice for the management of cancers, with with very few exceptions. I don't can't think of a cancer where that statement wouldn't be true. But the topic can still be confusing uh, because of the variety of testing types, different scenarios, um, and so I, I think there is the need for a good bit of education yet as we try to implement this in practice. So to set the you know, the conversation, of course, there's a difference between germline and somatic testing, germline being the testing of inherited genetics, that is the genetics that, you know, we receive from our parents and pass on to our children and share with our siblings. And then somatic testing, which is the testing of the mutations that are specific to tumors that are acquired uh, during the process of carcinogenesis that define the cancer as being distinct from the normal healthy tissue. And in somatic testing, you know, at the moment, without question, that tissue testing is the gold standard, it involves sending a piece of the primary metastatic tumor tissue. But there's also other ways to test, including cell-free DNA, which is a serum assay measured, me measuring the circulating tumor DNA that's being shed uh, from the tumor on a regular basis. In terms of why do we test, right? Obviously, germline testing can help inform both the patient and the family about treatment options. And I say his here, I should have updated this, of course, bladder cancer is, uh, affects women as well. But it's important to, to keep in mind that the screening guidelines have changed. So now the NCCN and the SUO both agree that all men with high, high risk, very high risk for metastatic prostate cancer should have germline testing, all men, right? Regardless of family history. And then family history is really for those men with lower risk disease or introductal histology. And in bladder cancer, it's recommended that a family history sh should be taken for men with upper tract urothelial cancer and consider evaluating for Lynch syndrome. Okay, and I think this is, uh, you know, my, my anecdotal experience talking to practitioners, I think this is probably done very infrequently and something we need to get to. And then the question for why test in somatic disease here it is to guide systemic therapy, right? Because, you know, the era of uh, one size fits all treatment is really passing now and, and targeted therapy uh, for biomarker driven approaches is really the standard. Uh, and, and I would expect to become more and more common uh, as we move forward. So approximately 15% of all men with prostate or bladder cancer are gonna carry a hereditary risk gene. And, you know, the, the data, the percentage, of course, varies in various data sets. What I'm citing to you here is from a, as yet unpublished Mayo Clinic data set where we tested uh, almost 4,000 cancer patients. And this 15% number holds fairly true across most common, most cancer types. Um, you know, maybe 10% in some, maybe higher in others, but right around this ballpark number. For our population that we're talking about in prostate and bladder cancer, the biggest targets are going to be the DNA repair genes, keeping in mind that these genes are also associated with other cancers, including breast, ovarian, and pancreas cancer. And then the mismatch repair deficiency genes, MLH1, MSH2, et cetera, these are Lynch syndrome associated genes and are also common in colon cancer and endometrial cancer and upper tract urothelial. Yeah, so the point here is that the germline results can influence patients treatment and alert family members to potential risk. You know, of course, we're all in the business of not only curing cancer, but preventing cancer, right? Early diagnosis is the best way to cure cancer. I'd much rather, you know, put myself out of business by letting the urologists and radiation oncologists on the call cure these patients before they ever have to reach the medical oncologist through early identification, right? Steve's with me on that. <laughs> So um, in terms of targeted therapies, right, we now have approved targeted therapies in both bladder and prostate cancer. And this is why you have to do the testing, right? So of course, PARP inhibitors are now approved. Uh, both recaparid and olaparib have been FDA approved for treatment with BRCA mutant metastatic prostate cancer. And I'll get much more into the details of this in the, the second talk later today because the label indications are different. Olaparib has a broader label. 
but the response rates are very high. The disease control rates are very high and the toxicities are fairly manageable. So, so that's some, like I say, we'll talk about more later. But also remember that MSI high or high tumor mutational burden in prostate cancer are now FDA approved indications for immunotherapy. So you gotta go looking for this because immunotherapy when effective can be dramatically effective even though it's only a minority of patients. And in bladder cancer, of course, we have ertafitinib now approved for tumors with FGFR mutation. So again, an, another targeted therapy option in a disease where we still have you know, relatively limited treatment options. And I think perhaps what gets overlooked sometimes is, you know, it is a recommendation now. The NCCN says specifically, the panel recommends molecular genomic testing be performed for stage four and uh, stage four bladder cancer and may be considered for stage 3B. And in fact, bladder cancer is really a target rich tumor compared to most cancers with mutations in a lot of potentially targetable genes, including you know, HERB-B2, which is HER2, and FGFR and others. All right, so maybe some questions to talk about. You know, I, I would say every patient with metastatic prostate or bladder cancer needs to be tested somatically. Um, I would say we should use a fresh biopsy whenever possible. Archival tissue degrades over time. And, and the older the tissue, the, the lower quality of the DNA, the more likely you are to miss a signal or to get uh, you know, perhaps potentially misleading signals. When tumor tissue is not available, go for cell-free DNA. It works. Uh, it has high correlation to tissue testing. And then, you know, here again, I don't think uh, a necessarily accepted statement yet, but my opinion, I would say retest patients before each new line of systemic therapy because tumors evolve over time. So that's it for my introduction. Uh, thanks for having me.